Welcome to this tutorial of ChemDraw, where we'll review the most interesting and important features of ChemDraw 16. When we open ChemDraw, immediately we see we have a big old workspace. That's where our molecules are going to appear. And we have a main toolbar. There's the marquee tool for selections. There's the eraser tool. And you see on the left side of the panel, you have a whole variety of bond tools. In this case, we can see that if we just hover over that toolbar, we can tear away that tool sub toolbar and leave it on the screen should we want to. Uh, we also have the chemical symbols which again will tear that menu away and leave it up and you can see that you can add charges or lone pairs to atoms. And here are some ring structures that are pre-programmed for us as well. First of all of course let's save documents so we can note Notice where we should be saving when we go to File, Save. And we notice when we save as type that we can choose a huge range of files. Most important besides the CDX file for ChemDraw is the graphical types. So there's JPEGs and PNGs and TIFFs, etc. Make sure you save your work. And if you're going to import your work into another program, usually you're going to want to save it as an image. Let's choose the aromatic ring structure and we'll just click on the screen and drop one there. And if we select a bond, we can add another ring to that, a fused ring, and we can swing that around and place that in a couple of different positions. Notice the aromaticity has changed the position of our double bonds when we fuse those two rings. And if we hit the control button, then we see that we can, we see a, that sort of resonance structure appear there and we can draw that as well. We can use the marquee to select the last thing we uh, we drew, or we can use the eraser to erase individual bonds or atoms. But it's usually much more convenient to use the marquee either to select the last thing or to click and drag and then hit the delete key to remove those. Now we can just start drawing some other molecules. Let's see what some other things we can do. So here's single bonds. I'm going to draw an sp3 carbon, so I'm going to drop a wedge there coming out of the plane, and I'll drop a hashed wedge to show one going into the plane. And then we'll find the text option for dropping atom names there. So I'll put a proton there. I'll put a methyl group on that carbon at that position, and an amino group at that position, primary amine, and a hydroxyl. And now, what we can do that's fun is to we can select that molecule again we're using the marquee to select the last thing we drew and we can go to view analysis window and that'll give us some interesting stuff like the formula the mass the molecular weight even a, um, an m to z ratio for a mass peak for mass spec and we can bring up the chemical properties from that same view menu and you can see that it's going to make some predictions of boiling points etc we can also check the structure under the structure menu and it gives us in this case we had no uh, noticeable errors and then we can clean up the structure and you can iterate through that if you like it'll try drawing it a few different ways for you um, you can always use the back arrow if you don't like what it's done now under the object menu we can show the stereochemistry so you see that central carbon is a stereocenter, so it'll define what that stereochemistry is. And I'll use the text tool to just reposition those functional groups. I'll swap the hydroxyl and the primary amine, and you'll see that we switch from R to S. So it'll automatically update that chirality for you. Let's zoom in to make that a little clearer. Now you can see that. So you saw under the main menu uh, bar that there are an, is an option for zooming in. And we can put those back to the R, the R configuration now. I'll close those properties. Let's see. All right, so there's our predictions for boiling points, etc. Let's draw something else. We'll choose a single solid bond. I'll draw one bond, two bond, three bonds. So we have one, two, three, four carbons. Notice those red squares. That's telling us that there's an error at that carbon. Probably the valence was wrong. So I'll add some more bonds there. And I'll start labeling those. This is going to be some kind of simple carbohydrate. I'll put a CHO up there. So it's an aldose. And I'll put a CH2OH there at the terminal carbon. And I'll add a hydroxyl. 
I'll specify that to hydrogen. If we don't specify, then it's going to assume that'll be a methyl group. So now we have our carbohydrate all labeled up. And we can select that structure again using the marquee tool. And we can clean up the structure. And it'll draw it. It'll, again, it'll give us a sense of the real geometry of that structure. Oh yeah, and we can add that chirality back, and you'll see the same same as before. We it'll give you the all the chiral centers in the molecule you've drawn and their configuration. Let's throw something else back up there. This will be an obviously physically wrong structure, just some alkane. Oops, and it tells us we didn't connect those, so I'll go back, erase that. You can always use Control Z to undo the last thing you did. And then you can clean that structure up, and it'll, it'll redraw that in a more geometrically accurate way, and it'll give us our predicted boiling points. Remember that the, the methylenes at those interior carbons are assumed to be methylenes, but then you can start drawing more other bonds to, to rearrange them. See, notice we can add it. We can also use the single bond tool to drop multiple bonds, or we can choose a multiple bond tool to add as many bonds as we might like. That's a silly structure. Let's get rid of that. But you can see that as you select a molecule, your chemical properties get updated. We can erase, again, individual bonds and atoms. We can also use this other tool to draw a chain as long as we like. So you can see 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So now we have octane. And we can also clean that up if need be. But see, again, our predictions there. So it's fun to try searching. So you have a whole series of searches that you can do either fr from this ACX database. Um, and it'll give us the ACX number which we can then use. I'll copy that, Control-C to copy. And we can look up Octane's properties just to see how the prediction algorithm of ChemDraw is shaping up. And we see we've got a boiling melting point of a boiling point of four, around 400 Kelvin. That's compared to 382 Kelvin. Boiling point of 216 Kelvin compared to the boiling point of 382. So maybe not a maybe not a perfect predictor in all cases, but sometimes can give you a ballpark. Use it with a grain of salt. We can also search for that structure by entering the ACX number. may or may not be useful to you. All right, now let's close the file. We don't care about saving this particular file. Let's open up a new document to play around with another fun tool. Remember, you can zoom in to see your work a little bit more clearly. We can get rid of these uh, other windows. And let's do a chemical reaction. So we'll draw nitrobenzene. So we can add a bond coming off of that aromatic ring. And then we can drop a NO2 group on the end of that. And so something we can really do that's great is to use this tool, the fragmentation tool, to create a chemical reaction diagram. So we can just draw a line across the part of the molecule we want to break apart. And you'll see that now it's gone back and created the potential reactants, as well as the product that I drew initially with an arrow. And you'll notice that there's an error, right? The red box tells us there's a problem. And um, it's probably the valence of that nitrogen or something like that. So we can um, select the molecule that we're after. If you want to see what the report is, uh, you can go check the structure. 
invalid, invalid valence. That's a common mistake to see, and of course uh, we can correct it. And I'll just correct it by um, switching to, let's see, we'll take our text tool again, and I'll just make it nitric acid. So very easy to create a reaction if you know what the product is, especially. You can go break that uh, down however you like just by using that fragmentation tool. And of course, you can save that however you wish, given the application. Now, this next example, the next several minutes of this video, is all about cr drawing out a chemical reaction. In this case, it'll be an enzymatic reaction. So you're going to be doing your own project. I'd like you to follow along with what I'm doing and realize that the video is sped up, so there's a little bit less time spent on uh, just cranking through the structures. But the enzyme that I'm illustrating here is glutamine synthetase. So first of all, what I'm constructing is glutamine. So you can see there's the alpha carboxyl and alpha amino groups of the amino acid. And then I've just finished the side chain. You see the errors. So those that's where I'm going to use my tool to add chemical information, in this case, negative charges and positive charges. Oh, I didn't put a positive charge on the primary amine. I'll fix that later. So there I've got my reactant, substrate 1. And here's substrate 2. It's an ATP. So I'll quickly build up a, phos a set of phosphates. And watch where the errors pop up everywhere. So you got to add some double bonds. You got to add negative charges where they belong, etc. I didn't draw the base, adenosine. So now let's draw some arrow pushing. So what I want you to do in your own example too is to draw some arrows, push electrons, right? So in this case, the carboxylic acid is attacked is the attacking the phosphorus, the terminal phosphorus. It can be a little tricky to get your arrow to be what you like it to be, but you can play around as much as you like. So there, we're attacking. Remember, the electrons are attacking the nucleus. And then, of course, to break that bond, the electrons go back to that ester oxygen, phosphoester oxygen. So that's step one. And now we'll just draw an arrow to show the reaction proceeding and that there's a product that gets kicked off. So we can draw a little curved arrow. And if you select that using the marquee tool, then you can use the arrow keys to position it properly so that it's really peeling off of the of the reaction arrow. So that looks nice. And we'll just put our product ADP vanishes. And now what we've done is phosphorylate that side chain carboxylic acid of glutamine, um, glutamic acid. And you can adjust, of course, as with any other of these software tools, the font, etc. And now I'm going to copy. So I've selected that molecule, the first molecule I drew, and I just copied and pasted. Control C, Control V, and then we move it down to our next position. And we're going to change things up. So now again, we phosphorylated that. So I'm going to build that phosphate in. And we've got to adjust our error problems, move our, move our charges around. And in the glutamine synthetase reaction, it's actually ammonia that is the nitrogen source. So now that we've added this high energy phosphoryl group, we're going to bump it off and transfer this amino group. And again, I'll you know you want to be consistent. I like Arial. We can use the so the formatting tools to change that to a subscript, obviously. And now we'll use the pin tool. And you can choose that second pin tool to actually draw a line that has the shape that you want. So you drop a couple of points in between, click down, and you get a curve that you can adjust more or less manually. And then when you select that, you can right click that, you can place an arrow at either end of that line. So now we've got, oops, we want to be done with that. So we select that, it looks pretty good. Uh, now we show a line of the, with the nitrogen attacking that uh, the carbon of the carboxylic acid, or what was the carboxylic acid. And I can draw a bracket around that. That's nice. It shows us one reaction. And then I'll select that whole thing, brackets and reactants. Oops, come on. Move it out of the way a little bit so that I can draw the final step of the reaction. I'll choose another arrow. 
drop that there. It's kind of short because we don't have much room on the way that I formatted the screen. And I'll take our original reactant and bring him down because once again, what we're talking about is basically an adduct of the same molecule. And I like that. We'll replace the oxygen with the text tool with NH2. Remember, the, the amido group in glutamine is not charged. So, oh yeah, and so we still have, we had to get rid of our negative charge, of course, and now we still have to have somebody peeling off of this reaction as well. The the phosphate group PI drops off, inorganic phosphate. We'll make sure our fonts usage is consistent looking good and uh, we'll just rearrange we'll reorient a little bit so you have to be a little careful about how you select so that you don't grab things that you don't like but in any case there we've got our complete reaction oh no not really complete let's label things that should be negatively charged gives us an error of course it should give us an error we know that the primary the amino the alpha amino group of amino acids free amino acids should be positively charged. We'll drop our positive charges in. And then I'll go label things. So again, we're just setting you up for how you're going to create your own enzyme reaction scheme. Um, and I'll go ahead and speed things up a little bit so you can see I'm just labeling. I'm trying to be consistent across. Another way to be consistent is to select and copy and paste. Remember, select Control C, Control V, drops things down with the appropriate formatting, if not the appropriate uh, names. So now we're looking good. Of course, you want to save your work. I would save the CDX file so you can continue working. I'll put this somewhere. It doesn't matter. But you get, again, you want to be conscious of what you name the file and where you place it so that you can be reasonably expected to find it again. So we'll save this as glutamine synthetase. And then we'll export also, we'll also save it as a graphics file. I'm partial to PNGs for some reason. I'll save it that way. You're going to lose some tools, of course, because now it's just a graphics object, not a ChemDraw object. That doesn't matter. And now I want you to use these tools to go off on your own to create a, your own enzyme reaction. Oh yeah, I forgot to draw some arrow pushing in that step. Obviously, we'll choose the nice uh, semicircular arrow to show that ester linkage, the phosphoester linkage uh, being disrupted when the, when the ammonia comes in. Beautiful. Go, do, be.